this old part of Tuchepi that we're going to visit, only around 20 to 40 people live. Yeah. Ah, so they live up there and mainly work in Tuchepi or in Mato. Anyone tired? A little bit. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, good. We have a long way to go. So, uh, as you will see, uh, back in the past, people used to live closer to the mountain than to the sea, as they live now. Uh, actually, it's been just around uh, 70 years since the people decided to move down to the coast and work in tourism. Uh, but why did this move happen so suddenly? Do you know? No. no. Well, the fact, uh, the answer lies in the fact that, uh, wait, uh, someone's missing. Oh, I think it's our good friend Mark from Austria. Mark! 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 Oh, there you are. Try to keep up, buddy, okay? Okay. 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 So, I believe no one needs a longer rest. Uh, we are just at the beginning of our journey, so we can go up. And I will continue our story uh, on the way. So try to keep okay. up. Okay. Yes. Okay. You too, buddy. Aye, aye, <laughs> sir. Why did the people decide to leave their stone houses in which their ancestors were living for hundreds of years? In which their grandparents and their grandparents' grandparents and so on were born? Two main reasons. Uh, one being that after living a hard life as farmers, uh, the locals have discovered tourism. Uh, a much easier way to provide for your family in a newly opened hotel on the coast. And the second reason was the great earthquake that happened here in 1962. Uh, after it shook the ground for two weeks, uh, people were afraid and they didn't rebuild their damaged houses in Tuchepi. Uh, instead, they decided to move down to the shore, and thus the Tuchepi we know today was born. Excuse me, but the coastline is not so far away. Weren't they afraid of another earthquake? Uh, no, uh, the people here are stubborn and fearless. Uh, only that way they were able to survive the terrain uh, that is only rich in stone. Uh, but there was perhaps one thing that the locals were afraid of. I mean, there are always snakes and wolves that scare people, uh, back then as now also, but wait, wait a minute. Mr. Jakoszek! Mr. Jakoszek, please, please come down here. I'm it's fine, it's okay. No, please, please. I'm okay, it's no worry. No, please, it's not safe there, come here. Okay, if you say so. 
Okay, so now you're safe and please don't do that again. Okay. Okay, let's continue guys. Okay. And girls. Yeah. There's not much left out of these uh, houses. I mean, the houses are still there, but only around 20, 30 people live there. Just a couple of restaurants up there. It's so sad, is it? Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Belarus. I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, in my country, it's totally different. It's so fascinating. You know, everyone just leave. Yes. It's sad. You know, one year everyone is here laughing, singing, and then all it's over. Crazy. Yeah. Thank you. So, how long do you stay here? And if you go through these hotels, you will find the way to the earlier mentioned Venetian door. Okay, so we're approaching the center of the old town. Uh, and before we continue our way to your hotels and other hamlets on the way, uh, we will have a lunch break at lovely Veza restaurant. Okay, guys, let's go. Schon jetzt? Whoa, this looks delicious. Dig in, people, and don't worry about Mark. He already had his snack, so. He has more time to take precious pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't tell him I told you that. Bon appetit. Excuse me, yeah. you were talking earlier about something that uh, all folks was, were afraid of. Uh, actually, it's a legend, and to explain it, I would have to tell you the whole story. So, uh, here it goes. It's after, before 200, 300 years ago, there was a shepherd named Ante. He used to live here, and he was transferring his sheep to pasture to the mountain. It was a common thing to do back then, to bring the sheep far away from any trace of civilization, to the clean air and the untouched delicious grass. On his way up he met a fellow shepherd named Mate, greeted him and continued on.
Some 20 minutes later, Auntie heard a strange melody. Auntie couldn't resist. He left his sheep and continued to the source of the song. Soon, he saw two pale figures with hair like fire. Those are fairies, he thought. Ever since he was a child, he heard stories about their beauty. heart pounding, he ran like mad. But the fairies disappeared. <laughs> hey, host, stay by me. Sudden, he heard the same melody again. Turned around and saw them. They were more beautiful than he could imagine. Soon his grin turned into a disgusted face as he felt a strong smell fouler than a rotting carcass. He looked around and saw the source of it. Instead of feet, the fairies had goat hooves. Terrified, he started to look up to the face of these mysterious beings. and beautiful creatures, here people felt only fear towards them. Uh, but luckily we are all too old to believe in such stories. <laughs> yeah. So it was a little bit explicit and now we have just eaten, so... <laughs> Look at the time, uh, we should be going now. Where is that Mark again? Funny guy that Mark, isn't he? 
don't tell him I said that, please. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to call him to see if he's uh, done with his art. Uh, okay. Just a second.